series against, yes, the Oakland A's from the American League West. And, yeah, our old friend, the Fanatic, after a tough week, he's feeling a little better. He might look a little different, but he's certainly feeling a little better that his ball club is back home. This morning, but they are happy to be home as they get set to begin a three game series against the A's. It's a six game homestand against the American League. And although the day started very early for the Phils, it was active. Roy Oswald placed on the DL with a stiff back. Ryan Schneider activated from the DL. He's in the starting lineup. Scott Mathison will be in the bullpen for the Phillies. Dane Sardina is going back to Lehigh Valley. And J.C. Romero has cleared waivers and has been released from the ball club. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Chris Wheeler. Sarge will be along in the fourth inning of today's ball game. Pretty interesting matchup wheels between the Phillies and the Oakland A's. It was a few weeks ago that the A's were kind of teetering toward the top of the American League West, and now they've kind of slipped down a little bit behind everybody else. Well, and they fell on some hard times. They got their manager fired, a new manager in here right now, and Bob Melvin. And the A's, well, they went lost two out of three up in New York in a series they just completed. You see they're okay at home, not so hot on the road. And look at their batting average, home runs, runs per game. They're one of those American League teams like we just saw with Seattle. They don't hit a whole lot, but look at that last thing on their earned run average. First in the American League with a 3.22 earned run average. Even though it's only June, you have an ERA like that in the American League. That's really good. Yeah, and considering all the changes that the A's have had to their starting rotation, they've had a lot of injuries they've had to deal with like every other team in Major League Baseball, and we'll see some of those changes this weekend. Yeah, well, one of the changes is a kid they're going to pitch here tonight, Guillermo Moscoso. He is a young right-hander. They got him in a trade, and the Phillies will see him tonight. They've never seen these guys, really. Josh Altman, the guy you see, will pitch in the final game on Sunday. He was in the Phillies organization and was in the Joe Blantondale. The guy in the middle, he is really good. A sinker baller, Cahill. Now here are the Phillies guys who will go. Vance Worley here tonight. Cole Hamels will pitch the game on Saturday. And then Roy Halladay comes back in the series finale against an old American League rival as he will pitch that game on Sunday against the Oakland Athletics. Vance Worley pitched the other night in Seattle. You know, he was pretty good in this game, considering the way he was when he went back to the uh, minor leagues at AAA. He was really struggling with the Phillies. He went back there and straightened himself out. The only negative, Tom, in this game was the fact that he was getting ahead of hitters so much, and then he wasn't quite able to put them away. But the good sign was is that he was getting ahead of the hitters. And the good news is for the Phillies with the injury to Roy Oswalt, they have some depth, and Vance Worley is part of that depth. So he'll be out there tonight for the Phillies. So it's game one of a three-game series. Shane Victorino has been moved down to the five hole. He has the best numbers of anybody in the Phillies lineup here at home. The lineup's at first pitch when we return.
Oswald talking to Rich Duby. Roy was placed on the disabled list today with a creaky back. In fact, he had an MRI earlier today. Uh, he's back in uniform, so maybe we'll get an update on whether the uh, of what his back condition is uh, as this night moves on. If we do, we'll certainly pass it along. Ruben Amaro met with the media today, and he said, listen, we just want to get this guy healthy more than anything else. We put him on the disabled list because it's obviously been an ongoing issue, and we just want him to be healthy at some point this year. And that's exactly what Oswalt wants, too. In fact, Roy uh, said last night that it's been bothering him even since he came off the disabled list, and he just didn't want to be la labeled a, a quitter in any stretch. So that's why he tried to gut it out, and he just couldn't gut it out any longer. Phillies have taken the field. Let's take a look at the A's starting lineup, brought to you by x only from Comcast. Leading it off at second base is Jameel Weeks. Cliff Pettick to the shortstop at second. Ryan Sweeney hits third, followed by Hideki Matsui and Connor Jackson. David DeJesus, the New Jersey product, is over in right field. He'll bat sixth. Hitting seventh is Kurt Suzuki. Scott Sizemore, the third baseman, bats eighth. And batting ninth and pitching is Moscoso, who says that he is a power-hitting switch hitter, as he will face right at her Vance Worley, the 23-year-old out of Sacramento, California, making his sixth start of the year. Well, it would be his first major league plate appearance yep. when he shows you whether he's a power hitter or first not. First professional plate appearance. First professional plate appearance. As Tom said, there are the numbers on Vance Worley, our Southwest Airlines scouting report on him. Uh, he had really good stuff in his last time out. The only little bit of a problem was he was getting ahead of hitters, and then he couldn't quite finish him off, look for a little bit better from that tonight. It is a smoking hot human night here too at Citizens Bank Park so you can keep your pitch count down. It would be a good thing. And it's time now for our Nissan Keys to tonight's ball game. So nice to be back in this beautiful ballpark and well you're going to expect some more low scoring games this weekend I would think because neither one of these teams have scored a whole lot of runs this year and Hey, at one time the town wasn't big enough for these two teams, so the Phillies stayed. The Oakland Athletics, where the Philadelphia Athletics moved on, and now they're back tonight as the Oakland Athletics. They left after the 1954 season, did the Oakland Athletics? I remember that, and to be honest, even at nine years of age, there wasn't a whole lot of anguish about it when they left town. It was just one of those things. Well, Bob Melvin took over as the manager of the A's a few weeks ago, took over for Bob Guerin. Overall, his eighth major league season as a manager. He's managed the Diamondbacks. He's managed the Mariners. So here we go. Vance Worley's ready to fire the first pitch of the night to Jameel Weeks, the younger brother of Ricky Weeks, and it's over for strike one, and it's no balls in one strike. They come at you with two switch hitters here at the top of the order, two young players that they like and think could be pretty good for them in the middle of the uh, diamond. Yeah, Weeks is a former number one pick by the Oakland A's. This after being selected in the eighth round. By the Milwaukee Brewers out of high school. He went on to play at the University of Miami. A little smaller than his brother, Ricky. Mm -hmm. A 1 1 pitch. At the knee, strike two. That's a 91 mile an hour fastball. Doesn't have the Gary Sheffield waggle either with the bat the way his brother does. Think about that. If he had signed with the Brewers, he'd probably be up in the majors partnering with his brother in one capacity or another. Low and inside, two balls and two strikes to Weeks. And they're both playing the same position in the major leagues. So far on this road trip, Weeks is two for 12. Just 24 years old, out of Orlando, Florida. And he tried to check, no appeal. Brian Schneider is doing the catching tonight. Schneider off the disabled list. Well, here you go again. He was ahead of him. And now it's 3 2. And this is kind of what was going on the other night in Seattle. There's Brian back, as Tom said, off the DL. That ball sliced foul into the seats. So it remains three balls at two strikes. Yeah, Vance talked about that the other night against the Seattle Mariners. It's one of the reasons why he lasted just five innings, because his pitch count was up despite the fact that he allowed just one run. There's ball four, so Weeks draws a walk. During the 2011 season, Turkey Hill will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. A lot of pitchers used last night. Well, not a lot of, but they got innings and 
stuff out of their bullpen last night, so they, they need their starter to go a little bit into this game and not off to a good start with a lot of pitches of the leadoff bat. The Phillies do have Scott Matheson available in the pen. He was just brought up from the minor leagues. Weeks has stolen six bases so far. He's been caught twice. As Pennington, another former number one pick, takes a strike. It's 0 1. Pennington was a first round pick back in 2005. And overall hitting 290 on the road, 251 for the season. One ball, one strike to count to Pennington. Fouls it away, and it's one and two. Pennington last year hit 250 with six home runs. He played in 74 games for the A's. And he stays alive as he hits it foul up the third base line. Weeks was going on contact. The A's are eight games under 500 at 34 and 42. Their big issue, and we talked about this during the open, is their record on the road. Now it's not all Bob Melvin's doing, but they're 15 and 26 on the road. Now they always say you should play 500 on the road and better than 500 at home. But 11 games under 500 on the road. Well, I haven't seen a lot of teams that go on the road. You know, the Phillies have been such a good road team. We really get spoiled. On the hands, a looper on one hop to Utley. Didn't come up. Rollins has one play at second. And that's it because that ball hit the, the edge of the grass and didn't take the hop that Utley expected. Right. Chase Utley thought that thing was going to come right to him on one hop, maybe get a double play because Weeks had to hold up thinking it was a line drive and it hit the cutout. And then it went straight down. Well, those are the kind that can go straight down like that and really full. Watch it hit right on there. And then it went down and he does a good job just catching it and make sure you get one out of it. Yeah, it wasn't hit that sharp uh, as well. And Pennington does run well. He has stolen six bases. Here's Ryan Sweeney who takes a strike. Sweeney in his fourth season with the Oakland A's. He is a fine defensive outfielder, as you see there, and he's playing center field tonight. Down and away, one ball and one strike. Sweeney was involved in the deal that sent Nick Swisher to the White Sox. The A's really made out. They got Sweeney and Gio Gonzalez, a fine pitcher who the Phillies once had. And Gonzalez is one of the best left handed pitchers in the American League. He, uh, I think he pitched a Reading one year for the Phillies and did a really good job. They liked him. You know, that was the year they went and uh, went after Freddie uh, Garcia. And, you know, just didn't work out. Outside and high, two balls and one strike. And the kid on Sunday is going to pitch for them. Altman was with uh, in the Blanton deal. A foul ball makes it two at two. So a lot of pitches here in the first for Vance Worley. And still just one man out and a runner over it at first base. Did Brian Schneider and Vance Worley both wanted that pitch. It looked like it was a little outside. And Joe West was not given the corner. Yeah, that's not a strike. A good job by Brian Snyder to frame it, but uh, you know it was a backdoor slider that didn't get 
didn't get to that back door. Joe West, the crew chief for this umpiring crew. Runner goes, ball chopped to shortstop. Rollins has one play, it's over at first. And it's in time to get Sweeney. So Pennington safe at second. Now there are two outs. Jimmy did a good job of holding his ground there, too. I don't think he was. I don't know that he was the guy that was covering with a left handed hitter. It's kind of hard to tell there because. But what he did nicely was come forward before he went and tried to back up any throw that was going to second base. And as a result he maintained his position the, and was able to get an out on the play. Well here's Sadeki Matsui some booze from the Phillies fans. They remember the 2009 World Series when he was the MVP for the Yankees. Well since that time he's been with the Angels and now the A's and he's playing left field tonight for the A's. Because there's no designated hitter and he takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Matsui who spent seven years with the Yankees hit 140 home runs. Outside one ball and one strike. You saw that note about his home runs. He hit 332 in Japan. And if you combine his his numbers in Japan and his numbers here in the States he's one homer away from 500 for his career. Swing and a miss one and two. And wherever Hideki Matsui goes it's the same with Ichiro. The reporters from Japan follow and that's been the way the case since he. Began his major league career with the Yankees. Yeah, we saw a lot of Japanese media out in Seattle last week. When they talk about the two, you know, Ichiro is apparently a very nice guy, but Matsui is a very accessible guy, particularly with the media. Breaking ball, little high, and it's three and two to Matsui. Just not a smooth inning at all for Vance Worley, but so far so good. He hasn't gotten hurt. But 11 balls, 12 strikes to this point. Working already with his third three ball, two strike count. With the runner at second, here's the pitch. Outside, ball four. Second walk of the inning for Worley. Well, this is the backbreaker against Pedro Martinez by Hideki Matsui. Yeah, he had a home run early in the ball game. That started the scoring, and then he had a two-run base hit here, and he put the topper on it right there. I think that was Jay Happ was in the game then as a reliever, and he doubled to right center. And you know they uh, they had the champagne on ice, and it was looking pretty good for the Yankees at yeah. that point. He had some good at bats earlier in the series, but that game right there, what he did offensively, that won him the MVP. As Connor Jackson takes a strike, I mean, wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yeah, because there were other guys, you know, did some really good things in that World Series for the New York Yankees. But you know that was the that was the pivotal game. Well, not the pivotal game. It was a clinching game, and he had a big game. Connor Jackson. Has faced the Phillies before while being a member of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And it's one ball and one strike. You get those shots of Bob Melvin over there in the dugout, and you keep thinking you're looking at Arizona because he was there for a number of years, and Connor Jackson was one of his players. Connor Jackson was ill his last couple of years with the Arizona Diamondbacks and then was dealt over to the A's. It's that one sharply, but right at Jimmy Rollins. It's short. He'll go the short way to get Matsui at second, and the side is retired. It took 27 pitches and a lot of work from Vance Worley, but he's through the first. We go to the bottom of the first.
Lee pitched so well a couple of days ago. Worley had a rough first, but it's a scoreless game as we go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, only from Comcast. Leading off at shortstop, Jimmy Rollins. Placido Polanco bats second. James Sutley hits third, followed by Ryan Howard and Shane Victorino. Raul Ibanez is in the six hole. He's in left field. Dominic Brown bats seventh. Ryan Schneider, the catcher, hits eighth. And batting ninth and pitching, of course, is Worley. And they will face 27 year old right hander Guillermo Moscoso who's making his sixth major league start. He has a PS pitched in games before wheels with the Texas Rangers but those were in the bullpen. Right he came over to deal with Texas. See not very good walk strikeout ratio South Southwest Airline scouting report. He's going to go fastball slider change up right hand hitters only 196 against it. Well, Jimmy Rollins leads it off for the Phillies and he takes a fastball first strike. Now the A's during the course of this season have had a lot of trouble with injuries particularly to their starting staff. They've used nine different starting pitchers. Now that's a lot at this point. Grounder right side weeks backs up on it. Had a little trouble getting a grip but he had plenty of time to throw out Rollins one away. So with one out here's Placido Polanco and this is the big change in the Phillies lineup. They've moved Polanco back to the two hole and Victorino to the five hole. Now part of that is to really just get Polanco going and Charlie Emanuel said that he wants to try the speed now in the five hole with Victorino and kind of separate the two left handers Howard and Ibanez with a switch hitter. Yeah, and he's pretty candid about it too before the game that he said look Polanco has more strength. He's he has more power than Shane Victorino. He said so I'm putting him back in that five hole because he can produce some runs down there because he's going to hit more extra base hits than Polanco would hit. And he hates to do it in a way because he liked the speed at the top of the order with those two guys. But you know Polanco has been coming up in a lot of RBI situations. That is not his strong point. Well, Charlie also said that. He needs to get him going. He said he doesn't have a whole lot of guys that are hitting well offensively right now. And he needs Polanco to be one of those guys. And he's behind one ball and two strikes. Inside two and two. You know, Polanco for the most part is going to hit singles. That's what he does. He'll, he doesn't run that well anymore. So doubles are even kind of tough for him unless he hits them down the line or or shoots one through the alleys towards the wall. See his average down to 288 Victorino at 295. He was above 300 at the beginning of the road trip. Mm. Three and two the count to Polanco. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Farrell George of Schwenksville Pennsylvania. If the Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, then Farrell will win a hundred dollars. Ball four, Polanco's aboard. So one out walk, and then that'll bring Chase Utley to the plate. Hey, good job of working the count there by Polanco against a pitcher you haven't seen. And now you want him to move over there, even though you're not a base stealer. I'd like to get him to move over a couple times if he could, just so you see something. Well, here's Utley, who was six for 21 on the road trip. He had 286. See his numbers over his last 16 games. That's brought his average up to 277. A lot of fastball so far. Well, Chase has a runner at first now, and the hole open on the right side is the A's infield defense at double play depth. Inside, one ball and one strike. See the alignment of the defense. Ball high and it's two and one 
Moscoso is the first Venezuelan born pitcher to start a game for the A's since 1977. It's a long time. In his last outing, he went four and two thirds. He allowed two runs, but they were unearned because his defense, which isn't the best, well, they weren't the best that day either. He just got a throw over for the bench. There you see he's born in Maracay, Venezuela, and has 108 days of Major League Baseball experience. Didn't show much of a move over there, though. He just kind of lobbed it. Fly ball to shallow center. Sweeney, the center fielder, coming in. And he makes the catch, and there are two outs, so Polanco goes back to first. So Utley's retired with two away. Here comes Ryan Howard. Howard with 62 runs batted in to go along with his 16 home runs. Those 62 RBIs put him second, one behind Prince Fielder. So he's closing quickly on Fielder. And they have the three infielders on the right side, including Weeks, the second baseman, out in shallow right field. We wondered if they would have the, this kind of defense, only because we've seen a much, much different defensive uh, setup from the last two teams the Phillies have faced against Howard. Yeah, and one on American League team, Seattle, and of course, the Cardinals out of the National League where they just finished. But this is more conventional for what Ryan Howard sees. Fouls it away, and it's one ball and one strike. Side two balls and one strike. That ball kind of fooled Kurt Suzuki. It's three balls and one strike to Ryan Howard. There's Victorino waiting on deck. Yeah, and you wonder if they'll give in here with a fastball. You know, it used to be the American League style of pitching. They never gave in in these situations. The leagues have changed. Uh, it's it's not that way as much. And a, lot, and a lot of that happens now in the National League where they'll throw off speed behind it or ahead in the count. Polanco goes. And the pitch is fouled away, and it's three and two. Polanco sort of had, had a couple stutter steps before he took off on that. Well, that's because he's running on the count. and. When you're running on the count like that, the one thing you can't do is get picked off. If you're stealing a base, that's different. Once in a while, you get picked off because you're trying to get a little bit better lead. Running on the count, the number one thing is make sure the guy throws a baseball before you move. Now Jackson will play behind Polanco with the count three and two, so he'll be off with this pitch. Probably they don't just play all the way back, but now they'll just jump back. There goes Polanco and Howard drags it to the right side picked up by the shortstop Pennington and he throws him out the side is retired 6 3 on the put out no runs no hits one man left we go to the second here in Philadelphia the A's nothing and the Phillies nothing.
Detroit or Blackberry. Get live audio, pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text that bat to 31826 or visit Phillies.com for details. A lot of smiles on the faces of the crowd here at Citizens Bank Park. Another sellout. The first of six here at home against the American League. First of nine overall. Well, son, the breeze has picked up too. It feels a little bit cooler in the. Looks like it's out of the northwest a little bit, blowing towards the right field corner. Well, there have been thunderstorms all around the Delaware Valley today. Hopefully, uh, things will cool off a little bit. Yeah, that's what was supposed to happen. You'll get a little bit of a cold front. Not much of one, but you know, when you see the flag starting to blow toward from the northwest, that's a good sign. 84 degrees, mostly sunny. David DeJesus says the count even one ball and one strike. DeJesus takes low. It's two and one. One of those guys out of the Royal system. We thought it was going to be a big time star for them. And, you know, it just didn't work. They finally moved him over here. He's had a pretty good career. Not a great career, but a good career. He played nine years with Kansas City. That's yeah. a long time. And, you know, he, he had star player potential written all over him. And he's a good player. Out of Rutgers University and Manalpin, New Jersey, which is in Central Jersey. Lifetime 286 hitter. Played for the great Fred Hill at Rutgers University. Two and two the count. Inside three and two. So another three ball yeah. count. Too many. Too many three two counts. You know, you're gonna have a short, a short outing if you keep this up. Foul ball toward the Hall of Fame club, and it remains three balls and two strikes. Worley has good velocity, and we bring that up. You know, not a lot of times we look at velocity, and you can overstate its its uh, necessity. But before he went down to the minor leagues, his velocity wasn't at 92. It had dipped a little bit, but it's been back up in the low 90s since he came back. De Jesus lifts it in the air to deep right field. Brown going back. He has room. Makes the catch. One away. So one got here in the second. Well, the history of interleague baseball for these two franchises, the A's, they've played pretty well in interleague play. In fact, when Ken Maka used to be the manager, that's when they used to make their move in the division. 140 wins against the National League, 18 and 21 against the East. And they've been here to Philadelphia a couple times. Philly's been out in Oakland too. Phillies, well, their interleague record, not so great. <laughs> but 10 and 8 last year. And four and five against Oakland. Two and one so far this year. Oh no what? No, uh, what three and three so far this Correct. year. Correct, yep. With the games out in Seattle. There it is. And as Tom mentioned against the FX, I knew they'd play Texas and won two out of three. Foul ball by Suzuki. It's one ball and one strike. Kurt Suzuki, who hails from Maui, the same island that produced Shane Victorino. They did not play high school baseball together. They played against each other. Swing and a miss. What a two. When Shane was a senior in high school, Suzuki was a sophomore. Two and two the count. He really late on that pitch, and it remains two balls and two strikes. And just a high fastball, maybe a little bit of a cutter. Just 90, 91 on the velocity. Almost like he had an emergency swing there, thinking it was strike three, and he better foul it off. He's down on strikes, two away. First strikeout for Worley. Suzuki's now three for his last 31. And with two away, the number eight hitter Scott Sizemore is due up. Just threw a fastball right by him, a little four seamer. 
actually tailed back into the middle of the zone where he didn't want it, but thankfully that's not a hot hitter up there. Scott Sizemore, we saw during spring training with the Detroit Tigers. In fact, he was supposed to be their uh, everyday second baseman. Last year in spring training, not this season, but last year, he was really a hot prospect for Detroit, as you said. And, uh, you know, he, he, just, he started the season, and he was their everyday second baseman as a rookie. A's picked him up at a deal that sent David Percy to Detroit. Now, Sizemore was supposed to take over at second base for Placido Polanco. Right. That gentleman made a nice catch on that foul ball. That's why the Tigers decided not to re-sign Polanco. Figure they get some salary relief by having a rookie play that position. One and two the count. And a breaking ball, low and inside, two balls and two strikes. Power hitting switch hitter waits yeah. on deck, he said. That's what I read, yeah. And a called strike three. Right on the outside corner at the knees. Back to back strikeouts for Worley. He retires the A's in order here in the second. So a nice piece of pitching by Vance Worley, particularly to get the last two hitters. Here's the last pitch to Scott Sizemore. Perfect place for the home plate umpire, Joe West. We go to the bottom of the second. Teams right from the palm of your hand. Your teams right now. Free. Download CSN Philly Sports app for your iPhone now. That would come in handy the last couple of days. There's been a lot of things going on between the NBA draft, the Flyers making trades, the Phillies making adjustments to their roster. Shane Victorino leads it off here in the bottom of the second. Victorino had a pretty good road trip. He was 8 for 25. Overall hitting 295. Mentioned the roster moves. Roy Oswalt was placed on the DL. Brian Schneider was activated from the DL. Dane Sardina went down to Lehigh Valley. Scott Matheson was called up from Lehigh Valley. And J.C. Romero was waived after he cleared waivers. He was given his outright release from the organization, and he's free to sign with anybody else. One ball, one strike to count to Victorito. In the air to right field, toward the end of the bat, so it's playable for De Jesus, and he makes the catch for the first out. These guys have never seen uh, Moscoso before, and, and they're out front of fastballs a little bit. Chase Utley did that and hit the fly ball to center field. Victorino just got out front, so you know, hopefully it's one time through the lineup, and they have a better feel for this guy's velocity, movement, and they can handle the fastball a little bit better because. You don't see major league hitters, especially as good as these guys. See his reaction there. He 
It's like how did how did I just get out front and hit a fastball off the end of the bat that was like 89 or 90 not moving all that much. Oh with one away here's Ibanez. Raul has taken the last couple of days off. He did pinch hit in yesterday's ball game. And he takes a fastball for a strike. It's 0 and 1. See Raul's tinkered with a stance a little bit. The bat starts out right on his shoulder before he pops it up. Just if you're interested in it, just the, the the way guys go through changing and getting out of slumps, they'll tinker with some things. Then you see this bat on the shoulder, and then he pops it up into the normal spot that he gets to before he tries to pull the trigger. I guess it's like anything else, Wheels. You just change until you figure it out. Right, and the whole key is how to get loaded. There's Greg Gross looking on, and he works so hard with these guys. Rounder to second. Weeks is up with it. And there are two away. So two outs here of the second. Hey, tomorrow from 5.30 until 8.30, the Phillies' wives save a pet at the park inside the first base gate will take place. Meet the Phillies' wives and support the PSPCA. Donate gently used or new blankets and new pet toys for the PSPCA. Mystery ball sale of the season. Meet and adopt a, a sheltered cat or dog. A silent auction with one of a kind signed and game used memorabilia. Dominic Brown is now the hitter. Wheels, you interested in another sheet too? <laughs> now Nittany's just fine. Wouldn't want to subject her to uh, a younger dog. You Sub know, subject the uh, subject Nittany or the younger dog. Both. <laughs> but more Nittany because the, you can tell when they get a little bit older they. Uh, they don't want all that friskiness around them. There you go. You can maybe bring one of those little toys for a dog. Well, and yeah, she'd like those. Yeah. One ball and one strike. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. You know that Wheels has an allegiance to the <laughs> Penn State Nittany Lions when he names his Shih Tzu Nittany. Well, Renee did that, but they, we found out that. Um, Shih Tzu means lion dog in Chinese. Of course it does. So there you go, a lion. <laughs> Perfect, right? I didn't know that. It's two balls and two strikes. She's 13 pounds. She's not as big as a lion. No. Very cute. Everybody loves her. Everybody loves her pets. That's why that's such a neat thing you're talking about tomorrow. And the Phillies' wives, by the way, they do, you know, the players do a lot of great things, but the wives, yeah. not only behind the scenes, but also out front like this, I mean, they do some pretty impressive things for the organization. Oh, so great when uh, Chase is involved in that, along with his wife, Jen, and when you can rescue a, a, an animal, that is, that is really, really a nice gesture. Here's the 3 2 to Brown. Low ball four, and the Phillies have another base runner on a walk. It's their second of the game. And here's Brian Schneider. Brian Schneider hitting just 173 with a couple home runs and four RBIs. He played seven games in his rehab stint with Redding. Now he had to stop and start his rehab program a couple different times. And he said one of those times he was kind of nervous because he had to go back to ground zero to get his rehab going again. well that hamstring was worse than he thought because I remember talking to him right after he had done it we were in Atlanta after being in Florida and he thought he was coming along pretty fast and obviously it's taken a long time he said today that he feel, he doesn't even feel it and he's that's a good thing because yeah. a lot of times when you have hamstring or calf problems you'll feel it for the rest of the year it's Carlos a night off he caught every game on that trip. Breaking ball in there for strike one. It's 0 and 1 to Schneider. Whether Dominic Brown's allowed to run on his own or not, but that was a. He, he looked like he was going to go then, and it was a great pitch to run on because it was a slow breaking ball. Brown has stolen a couple bases. He hasn't been as aggressive recently. 
And again, he hasn't been on base that much. A line drive toward right field. De Jesus moving over, and he grabs the sinker before it hits the turf. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits. One man left. We completed two. It's on to the third. Still A's nothing, Phillies nothing. And please submit your answer on the subject line. Wheels, who is the A's all time leader in saves? The answer will be revealed in the seventh inning. Wheels was just twirling his mustache. Well, while we were away in Seattle and in St. Louis, there was an accident at Lehigh Valley. The Fanatic got in the way of a foul ball. In all seriousness, that ball skipped off the dugout and nailed the Fanatic right below the beak. And uh, he looks like he's he's okay right there. A little stunned, a little shaken. <laughs> and look at him wobbling through the stand. <laughs> That's a great, great act he put on after it that. It sure was. He got conked pretty good there now. Moscoso in his first professional at bat. Uh -oh. Takes the ball. The Fanatic is back. The ice didn't do its job. The ice did not do its job at all, although there's no swelling whatsoever. <laughs> the ice, he doesn't need any more. He looked good. There's no bandage anymore. There's nothing. You look great. Well, what we want to know is with your with your tremendous athletic ability and agility, how come you didn't move? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, how can you not get out of the way of that thing? What about the fans not helping, not letting you know that there was actually a ball coming? Really? I thought they were the friend of the fanatic. We're listening to some birds chirping uh, in our in our headset right now. <laughs> Look like you took about a seven count there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad to see that you are healthy, you're vibrant, and you're looking as good as usual. <laughs> Wouldn't know what to do without you. Yeah, we were very worried though. Here, Let's here. take another look again. It's going to hurt there again. It is. They've spotlighted. They've pulled out. Bam, oh, right there, bam. right below the beak. It was a throat shot. Yep. Oh, and to the count. So you're feeling okay? Everything's good. Not wobbly at all. You know, I have to say that feels pretty good. <laughs> Very comfortable. <laughs> now, if it could only grow hair. <laughs> Well, it's good to see the fanatic back on his feet. Jimmy Rollins back on his feet as well. Throws out weeks, and there are two outs. I'll tell you what, he took a pretty good shot. Who? I can imagine uh, that could have hurt a little bit, huh? Yeah. Well, the friend of the fanatic, Tom Burgoyne, uh, told us that uh, the fanatic was a little woozy. Yeah. But was feeling okay. Uh, the next day. A little woozy anyway, uh, you know, when, when everything's okay, let alone getting smoke like that. In all seriousness, no, but the way he looked after he got hit, I mean, that was funny. That was some funny stuff. 
Always a shtick. Yeah. Always always on as a fanatic. Even even in immense physical pain like that, ready to pass out. <laughs> oh, it won the count to Cliff Pennington. Who reached in a fielder's choice his first time up. That's low. One ball, one strike. The reaction of the one gentleman, the older gentleman who yeah. was sitting in the stands, I mean, he was laughing. Yeah. He probably thought at first, he's not okay. Okay, he's okay. Slowly hit toward the middle. Utley to his right. He's up with it, and the side is retired in order. So, Van Swirley's retired the last seven. He's retired the A's in order in the second and the third. We have played two and a half. The Fanatic is back. There's no need for the ice pack anymore. Maybe the sunglasses just to look cool. Fastest mobile broadband network and by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines do rapid rewards, unlimited reward seats, and no blackout dates. Bottom of the third, neither team has picked up a hit just yet. Both have had base runners. Vance Worley trying to take care of that. Fouls the first pitch back. It's 0 1. Worley likes to swing the bat, too. He is really aggressive. He was saying that when he was drafted by the Phillies at a high school. He had to decide whether he was going to be a hitter or a pitcher before he went to Long Beach State. <laughs> well, you can see he likes to get up there and hit, but that pitch right there is the reason why he's a pitcher. That's a breaking ball, and and that was a pitcher's swing at it. <laughs> Phillies pitcher is hitting 163. There's a liner to right to Jesus. He was playing kind of shallow. But he's able to get back a big grab. Well, the San Diego Padres will be here Friday, July 22nd to kick off a four game wraparound series that includes 1980s Retro Night on the 22nd at 7.05. Sunday, the 24th. That time is still to be determined. It's a Pico Chase Utley Fathead Jr. free to fans 14 and under. Get your tickets now. There are limited seats available by going to Phillies.com. See Roy Halliday in that shot of him right there. He went, that was crushed. He really appreciated that swing. Well, I asked Marty Wallover, who's the Phillies director of scouting. Marty's a great guy and always uh, quick with a comment. I said, So, was there any thought of Vance being a position player out of high school? Because he was saying that he had to decide what he wanted to do when he went to college. He said, uh, We were looking at him as a pitcher. Rollins lines it toward right center field. Sweetie dives. Did he get it? He did. He hung on to it. Two outs here in the third. Well, they made some good plays in the outfield. That ball was hit right on the nose. So was the one to end the inning by Brian Schneider in the second inning. Tremendous play by Sweeney. You know, it's a lot easier play if he had the glove on the other hand because this way he's got to dive, catch it across his body, had it all the way. Right there. Now sometimes the ground's going to knock that out, or you can hurt your wrist. And that's he held, what I was thinking. And he held on to it. You see some twisting going on there. Well, he has had. A 
perfect record defensively in the last 154 games. See why. Some twisting going on here tonight with Chubby Checker too. Huh? The sounds of Philadelphia celebration going on before the ball game, the concerts out in Simmons's Bank Way, and the great Chubby Checker, Jerry Butler, Dee Dee Sharp, honored before the ball game. Oh, it won the count to Polanco. So many talented people born and raised in oh. Philadelphia. I should say raised in Philadelphia. Chubby Checker was born in South Carolina, but raised in South Philly. Polanco hits it in the air to straightaway center. This is going to turn out to be an easy inning for the right hander and he retires the Phillies in order. So three fly ball outs two hit pretty hard. We've completed three. It's on to the fourth here at Philadelphia. Still a scoreless game. Curl or fall off. Who but W.B. Mason. Top of the fourth here at Citizens Bank Park. A scoreless game. In fact, it's a hitless game. Gary Matthews joins us up here in the booth. The A's don't have a hit. The Phillies don't have a hit. Both teams do have base runners because of some free passes that were given out by each of the starters. Vance Worley will go back to work here in the fourth against Ryan Sweeney, Hideki Matsui, and Connor Jackson. Sweeney hit one sharply to short his first time up. Retired by Rollins. And he takes a strike. It's 0 1. On the left field, a lot of foul ball. It's one ball and two strikes. Sarge, we've seen the Rangers, the Mariners, and now it's our first look this year at the A's before the Red Sox come in on this homestand and the Phillies go to Toronto. But uh, two of the three American League teams we've seen so far, they don't really hit for a high team average. Well, that's put the Miley. <laughs> <laughs> really, I think it's just been awful for me. See a lot of balls found off on you know, hitting counts, fastball hit to the other side. I mean, we're getting into almost July. Guys should be able to square the ball up. And let's face it, we're not talking about, you know, Cy Young Award uh, pitchers other than Felipe, uh, Mr. Uh, Hernandez, King Felix out in Seattle, and they handled him well. 
You know, it seems like the guys that really can go after you, they have better at bats against. Down and away, three balls and two strikes. Well, that is true about the Phillies, but I'm even saying that these American League teams, you know, it's the vaunted American League. Oh, they, boy. They pound the baseball. You know. Well, certainly Seattle, not that type of team. And again, here with Oakland, not that type of team. Well, Bob Melvin, who took over for Bob Guerin. He was just trying to stabilize some things. Another foul ball and it remains three balls and two strikes. Well, for so many years, however, Oakland, they like players that have that on base percentage, meaning walking a lot, taking a lot of pitches. Well, there's a a ball outside that Sweeney takes, and it's the third walk issued by Vance Worley. Uh, the A's obviously have a good history, as Sarge says, of having some pretty powerful offense. Now, they also have a history of being here in Philadelphia. From 01 to 08 at Columbia Park, 09 to 54 at Shide Park, Connie Mack Stadium. Yep. Five World Series championships. And of course, Connie Mack is the winningest manager all time with 3,627 wins. I mean, think about some of the players, the great players that were part of the Philadelphia A's franchise. Jimmy Fox, Eddie Plank. I mean, the list goes on and on. No, well, they are great players. And again, you know, the tradition, too, is what makes the following that much better with the fans when you have that rich tradition. And Especially when you're winning. Matsui takes inside. It's one and one. Well, there's a, a great organization here in Philadelphia, the uh, Philadelphia A's Historical Society. They have their own website uh, and they do some great work in keeping the tradition of the Philadelphia A's, the history of the Philadelphia A's alive. And it's kind of neat. One and two, the count to Matsui. When the A's played here in Philadelphia, colors were a little different. They had blue as their primary color, not green. Uh, didn't particularly care for the green when it first when they first came out. Swing and a miss. Matsui's down on strikes. Third strike, fourth strike out. Excuse me for Worley. Uh, there's one away here in the fourth. Well. Talking about the, the Philadelphia A's jersey, the Majestic Clubhouse store, and the, where there's a number of items that are available, including the old Philadelphia A's cap. There's the, the jersey, has some blue trim, some blue piping. It's kind of a neat look when you, you, you think back, Sarge. Well, a lot of times, let's face it, it's just a, almost a fashion look to be able to have some of the retro type of uniforms, and it goes on and on, not only just in. Baseball, but in a lot of the uh, the other sports. Yeah, and back in 1954, attendance had dwindled for the A's. They drew about 300,000 people that final year uh, before they hit the road. And you know, as we said, they won some championships here. The American League uh, it was pretty good, pretty good baseball well, here in Philadelphia. Rich tradition and having Fox on the team alone would just about make you want to follow that team. Connor Jackson pops it up to the left side, and Placido Polanco casually. Makes the grab. Well, the ball was just hit so soft. I mean, almost as if it had a, a parachute on it coming down. But again, uh, just not a whole lot of hitting, uh, not only this tonight, but for me, just about the whole season. Well, you think about uh, this matchup, Phillies and the Oakland A's. You know, think about the history of the Philadelphia A's. You know, if there was a natural rival, it's kind of difficult to make it. Philadelphia and Oakland because yeah. they're so far away. So far away. And uh, again, you got to be able to win quite a bit. And the A's did once they got out uh, to California even more with those teams that they had. Reggie Jackson, uh, uh, of course, winning a lot of uh, championships over there. Joe Rudy, those players. Well, I, I just uh, I, I think about it. The one good thing about this matchup is that it brings to light the history of the Philadelphia A's. I think that's kind of cool. Well, we'll get a chance to see and uh, how many of those retro uniforms are being sold and see how the fans feel about those A's. 
But wouldn't you agree with that? I mean, from oh, a base, absolutely. baseball standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of brings to the forefront some of the great history that this city had in the American League. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of times you, you have a tendency to really forget, you know, just about some of those traditions. Two balls and one strike to David DeJesus. Runner on first. Two outs here in the top of the fourth. Right down the shoot for strike two. Must have a difficult time picking it up out of Worley's hand. Well, it's right down the middle. I don't know what else he could be looking for unless he thought maybe that pitch a little bit high. Another three ball, two strike count for Worley. Too many deep counts. You know, those are the pitches you really want to try and put those hitters away. Now well, we got that runner that is will be off and running. There he goes, 3 2 pitch, hit foul by DeJesus. And it stays alive, yet that does. Six three ball counts for Vance Worley. Well, that's what gets that pitch count up when you have those deep counts. Ground ball softly hit to shortstop. Rollins will throw across the diamond in time to retire DeJesus. And although he walked the leadoff batter, it still was an easy hitting for Vance Worley. He still has not allowed a hit through four. We go to the bottom of the fourth that Chase Utley is due to lead it off for the Phils. By Bud Light Lime, the just right taste of Bud Light with a refreshing splash of 100% natural lime flavor. And by Chevrolet, see your local Chevy dealer or visit ChevyDealer.com. Well, some A's fans are in the house. Not only with the traditional greeting goal, but we just saw a young lady wearing the, the old school Philadelphia A's cap that we were just talking about. There it is, right there. Sutley starts things off here in the bottom of the fourth. Vance Worley hasn't allowed a hit. Guillermo Moscoso has not allowed a hit. Breaking ball, and it's no balls and two strikes to Utley.
Talk about fighting one off right there, just trying to stay alive. Yeah, that's that pitch. He felt maybe he was going to come back across the plate. It stayed inside. Did a good job of following the pitch off, and that's what you want to do. Close pitches, foul them off until the pitcher makes a mistake. Hopefully, you can get that base hit. We were talking before Sarge how some of the Phillies hitters were out in front of this guy's fastball. Is it bit better to be out in front the second time around you can make some adjustments than to be late. Well I mean for me I didn't think they were out in front of the fastball. I thought they were out in front of that change up that he was throwing. You know the fastball I thought and for an example I thought J. Rowe might have hit uh, something that was off speed a little bit. I mean he got on it. But that ball that he hits in that area, that ball usually is hit through the gap if it's really hit uh, hit hard. You know, but the adjustment again hasn't shown a lot of hard breaking pitches. Change up a fastball for me. There's uh, a breaking ball, but not that breaking ball that for me you have to worry about. You know, adjustment. You get a strike and put a good swing on. Three and two, the count out lead. That'll stay in fair territory. Third baseman Sizemore makes the grab. Yeah, there's one away. Hey, reminder while the Phillies are home this weekend, you can punch out some ballots here at Citizens Bank Park or go to Phillies.com. And vote up to 25 times for your favorite Phillies player. Now voting ends, as you see there, at 11:59 p.m. Eastern Time this Thursday. Where you can vote at Phillies.com up to 25 times for your favorite Phillies player. Guys like Ryan Howard, Shane Victorino, Placido Polanco has a pretty healthy lead at third. Vote early, vote often. Here's Howard. He's 0 for 1. Ground out to shortstop. Takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. He may have been fooled on that one, Sarge. Yeah, that ball would change up as it really going away. He was looking fastball all the way on that. You know, and a, a, the adjustment again comes when you're able to pick up that spin as quick as you can. No, well, he goes after a high fastball and he's down swinging second out of the inning. And it's the first strikeout for Moscoso. Two outs here in the fourth. Uh, this is what they do with Ryan Howard. They'll get two strikes on him, elevate the ball, hope he'll swing at a pitch that's not in the zone, the way that one appeared. Got another strike zone. So Howard's 0 for 2. Here's Victorino. He flied to right his first time up. Charlie kind of rolling the dice here, flip flopping Victorino and Polanco. Maybe get one guy going and keep another guy, in Victorino's case, going because he's hit so well here at home. Yeah, not only that, though, you want to put that hot hitter behind Ryan Howard so that he'll get some good pitches to hit. Well, Polanco does a pretty good job in being able to know balls and strikes, so his on base percentage would make sure maybe he's on and then. Other guys can do the damage, and particularly uh, in Howard. Breaking ball, that's a strike. It's one and two to Victorino. That, that's not a strike. <laughs> Just flat out not a strike. No. You know, it's, it's a breaking ball, starts down low, kind of almost backdooring it. You know, Joe West will call that pitch from time to time. Maybe he thinks the game's going too slow. Let's get it going and call and call some strikes. It does feel like there's a, a feeling out process going on here between these two teams. Well, yeah. Well, both of them need to 
be able to try and get hits and uh, just not happening right now. Sizemore comes down the third base line and retires Victorino. So another one, two, three inning for Moscoso. We've completed four. It's on to the fifth. Still no hits for either team. Emmanuel and Raul Ibanez shares his proudest moment in his baseball career. All this and more on Phillies Clubhouse, presented by Ransom Cat tonight at 11, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. A scoreless ball game. I think both teams are hoping that there's at least one ball hit to the wall as we go to the top <laughs> of the fifth. Is there a manager who's who you would run through a wall for? Well, I got to think about that. What about Dallas? Well, the, the, the fact is that again, when you're just you're playing hard all the time and really talking with Pete Rose even earlier, it made it easy because you knew what those managers demanded, and that was be on time, give 100%, and make sure you do some occasional clutch hitting. You know, going through a wall, I don't mind maybe picking up that ball and trying to do damage on the offense. I don't like that. Uh, even though I did go up on some walls, it's just injuries that you, that you can get. You know, doing that. And I guess in terms of just playing as hard as you can is what Dominic actually talking about. If you want a manager to like you, get yourself some hits. Okay, catch the ball and throw some strikes. Two balls and two strikes to Kurt Suzuki. Pretty good catch right here, Sarge. Whoop. Oh, you mentioned that's not always the first guy that, that ball goes off of. It, the one it ends up with. Grounder up the third base line. That's a fair ball, barehanded by Polanco, and he got him. Wow! Wow! What a play by Placido Polanco. Well, that's a great play on both ends. That's a do or die. He doesn't catch that ball. It's going to be a base hit. He throws the ball over. Now, this is what you call a swinging bunt. Top spin on it. He comes in, bare hands it, and to throw it right there on the money. Good stretch by Ryan Howard as he comes right into your pitcher. That's not an easy play to throw like that and make sure it's right on the money, as you said. Here's Scott Sizemore who takes a strike. It's 0 1. Well, you know, Blanco, as we've stated over and over again, is. Is one of the best defensive third basemen in the league. And last year he led all third basemen in fielding percentage. Just does it a little differently than what we were used to with Pedro Feliz before. 
but he gets it done. Yeah, he has soft hands, has a very accurate arm throwing over to first base. There's Two balls that, and one strike to count. Excuse me, Tom. There's that floating zone. Pretty good pitch there by Worley. Those are the pitches that he likes to be able to throw. If you're going to miss, just barely miss it. Pitchers do up next. Ball four, another walk issued by Worley. That's really been the only issue for him tonight. He's walked four because he is not allowed to hit. Well, take a look at this. They'd really be in trouble right now if Polanco had to make that particular play as he comes in. And again, you got to have a lot on it. He makes it look easy. But it's a difficult play running in gathering yourself one handing the ball and getting it over to first base. Moscoso looked like he jabbed at that but it wasn't called a strike it's a ball. Yeah I think Snyder maybe should have asked for a little bit of help on that. But he did appear to jab at it. Once it toward the right side, Howard will pick it up and flip underhand to Utley. The sacrifice is successful, the first of the career for Moscoso. 3 4 on the put out, two outs with a runner at second. Well, he said that he was a power hitting switch hitter, but right there he just showed that he was a right handed hitting pitcher who was able to get the sacrifice down. Well, that's all they're asked to do is to give your team a chance to win. They all like to brag to feel that they can hit. There's Gerald Perry, the hitting coach that you saw right there in the dugout. That's a guy that could hit. Here's Weeks, and he takes outside. Weeks is 0 for 1. There's Gerald Perry. Been with a lot of clubs as their hitting coach was. Hitting coach in Seattle with the Cubs. Oh, look out. One and one the count. <laughs> well, a little bit too loose, and he just lets it fly. Thank goodness that it didn't uh, get into the stands. There were folks in the stands that were getting ready. They didn't know where that bat was going, but they were making sure that they were protected. Well, for good reason. As he puts a little more of that uh, Manny Mota stick on it for a little stick. Yeah, it is pretty sticky, too. I mean, in the hotter. It gets the stickier it, it, it gets on your back. Only need a little bit. Outside two and one. Just a little bit too fine. Got to be able to get in there a little bit more. The deeper you get it, where you're going behind the hitters, the easier it is for the hitters to put a good stroke on the ball. Little flare foul out of play. Polanco gave it a look. Two and two the count to Weeks. Well, this is what Worley's done tonight. 27 pitches in the first, 22 in the fourth, and here in this, the fifth, he's already thrown 16. Now on the other side of the ball, Moscoso has thrown 56 pitches, and neither is allowed a hit. The 2 2. Low and inside, 3 and 2. I don't even know if you'd call this effectively wild. Well, no, because he's not throwing up near the hedge. He's just wild where it doesn't really mean anything when you're not close to the hitter. Ground ball toward first. Diving stop. Howard flips to Worley. He wow. got what a 
play all the way around. I'm not sure which part was better. The catch and hold by Worley or the initial stop by Ryan Howard. Well, he led him right to the bag. And, boy, that's an athletic play on both ends of that. And Howard laying down. Worley coming right here in your picture. He just flicks that up near that bag there as he runs over. Look at that. Leads him right on the bag. Saved a run. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Roy Ibanez leads it off. Scoreless game, hitless game so far for both teams. Well, he's do have some bullpen action as we hit the bottom of the fifth. Vance Worley's through five. He hasn't allowed a hit, but he's issued some walks. In fact, he's walked four so far. Moscoso has not allowed a hit. He's walked two as Ibanez takes outside 2 and 0. Oh. And Scott Matheson is up and loosening in the pen for the Phillies. The pitcher spot. Is due up fourth here in the bottom of the fifth. Two and one the count. There's Matheson who arrived from AAA earlier today. They're hoping he would get here before the start of the ball game. He dabbled in a little starting down in the minor leagues the last few weeks. Oh, that's what's good about the minor leagues. You can switch guys. The ball is lifted toward left center field. On the run is Matsui, and he makes the basket catch. And I would assume he let out a big sigh of relief after he made the grab. Well, this is a part of the night when that ball is hit. Unless you're used to it, you're not going to pick it up right away. See him looking up in the air, but that's more so. Where you just your heart just drops all of a sudden you see the ball and he uses a basket catch how he comes around Willie Mays like as he says whoo boy. Oh, one out for Dominic Brown he walked his first time up. Two and oh the count. Uh, this should be a pitch here two and oh that you know he's looking for the fastball to put good wood on it. If it's something else just go on and take it. You're still a hit in the count. Wow. But in the grand scheme was that an okay pitch to go after. Oh absolutely because okay. he's a good low ball hitter. You know you take the guesswork out of it when. You're ahead of in the count. That one looked like it was a little farther outside. Well, those are those balls there that West will call on you at two strikes. I would suggest you you be swinging on that pitch. 
Here's the 2 2 to Dominic Brown. Change up low, three balls and two strikes. Moscoso began his professional career with the Detroit Tigers. Made it to the majors the last couple of years as a relief pitcher for the Texas Rangers. There's ball four. Brown is aboard. Second time he's walked. Well, it's time now for the Home Depot defensive play of the game. Sarge, which one, Blanco or Howard? Well, I got to tell you, though, I like that Howard play for sure because he's down there. You got to lead the pitcher, and he does a great job in staying right there on the bag and getting out of the way of the runner. The Home Depot doing more on defense. So one gone, runner at first. Philly's still looking for their first hit. And Brian Schneider hit the ball hard his first time up, lined out to right. I would think that if Schneider gets on and Brown's in scoring position, then Worley may not hit. And they may go to the bullpen. You know, I know it's a scoreless game. He's thrown a lot of pitches. I mean, wouldn't you agree, Sarge? Well, you know, I think it depends, and we've always said it. Charlie's going to go on how he feels he's out there pitching, even though he hasn't given up any runs. If he's struggling, and for sure, if they, I think they get a guy in scoring position that uh, he's going to pinch hit for. Him. Pete McCannon having a word with Jimmy Rollins. Breaking ball outside, one ball, one strike. Now, I'm not saying that definitively that will happen. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. No, but I mean, when you're having trouble scoring and you get a guy in scoring position, you have a pitcher out there that's just been on the ropes, not knocked down. You might want to try and get him out of there, you know, and then uh, see if you can and score a run or two. The other thing they could do is if Schneider gets on and it's first and second, they could have Worley sacrifice or attempt to, even though there's, you know, be one out. Yeah. I think they're talking about that right now. Yeah, well, I take my chances for sure on trying to get a hit or two as opposed to the butt. But the guys are hitting the ball well. You see guys are squaring it up. They have hits. Eh, maybe a different little story. But these are the clubs you don't want to stay close to. They end up getting one or two runs. Seems like a mountain to get over. I haven't seen a hit and run uh, yet. Not a bad uh, count for a hit and run. Good speed on first base. Fly ball to straightaway center. Sweeney ventures back, makes the catch. And there are two outs, and Worley looks like he's going to bat. Hey, host your next corporate or social event at Citizens Bank Park. The ballpark offers a variety of unique spaces and on site catering. It's available year round for many types of functions, both large and small. So even when the season ends, there's still some things you could do here at the ballpark. Call the special events department at 215 218 5100 or visit phillies.com slash special events. Worley hit the ball hard his first time up. Yep. Retired by David DeJesus in right field. Toward left field, not deep. Hideki Matsui over into the alley. This is an easier catch for him. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits. One man left. So both teams through five. Still no hits in tonight's game as we go to the sixth.
dominating right now. The biggest offseason acquisition in baseball is showing his worth to his buyers. Cliff is tanking the mound and tanking over in June, silencing opponents to one earned run in 33 innings while becoming the first Phillies pitcher with back-to-back -back shutouts in the last seven seasons. Sometimes you just have to tip your cap. And this tip is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Now more than ever, we're here for you every step of the way. Well, there is Cliff Lee. He and the uh, rest of the Phillies pitchers took batting practice today. Cliff has pitched hit twice now this year, including last night. And boy, he was outstanding two days ago for the Phillies. And, well, Vince Worley tonight is not allowed a hit through five. He'll start the sixth. And the sound of Philadelphia celebration. And the Fanatic doing a little twist in honor of the great Chubby Checker, who was honored before the start of the ball game tonight. Some pretty good tunes flowing through the ballpark this evening, Sarge. Yep. Chubby Checker, Jerry Butler, Dee Dee Sharp, all honored before the ball game. David DeJesus swings at the first pitch. Or excuse me, Cliff Pennington swings at the first pitch and fouls it away. It's 0-1. Pennington tonight is 0 for 2. Broke his bat. And it remains no balls at two strikes. Every time the Phillies retire the opposing team 1 2 3 Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by the Xfinity HD triple play your complete lineup for digital TV lightning fast internet and home phone. And that looks very strange Sarge as yeah. we're here in the top of the six. Sure does. That's pretty difficult to take a guy out. <laughs> no hitter. Well, this is his 98th pitch. Fly ball shallow center. Victorino. He froze for a moment. One away. Wow. And yeah, that'll bring Ryan Sweeney to the plate. Well, that is a beautiful sight right there. A little breeze coming in from left center field. Twilight here in Philadelphia. Sweeney so grounded out to shortstop his first time up, then walked his last time. Toward left center field. Ibanez and Victorino and Shane is there. So is Raul and he steps in front to make the grab. Now that ball coming back to Ibanez. Now Victorino, one of those center fielders, when it's in the air, he's going to catch it. Good thing is they didn't collide and the ball was caught. Anytime that you see him go right in front of him, anytime that ball's hit from the left hander, it's going to spin right back. To that left field. So two outs here in the sixth. Here's Matsui. And he takes a strike. This rate, we're going to have a lot of sore hands with guys swinging the bats. They've been breaking them, balls on the thumbs. <laughs> Same spot, and it's 0 2. Now he likes that ball more middle in. Real turn on it does have power. We've seen him before. Want to make a good pitch. Won't have to throw a strike here. Line drive towards center field. Here comes Victorino. He dives and he can't get it. It's the first hit of the night for. Either team and Matsui's going to pull in the second with a stand up double.
Now the Phillies fans applauding the effort of Vance Worley. See the location of this pitch there. He squares this ball up. Victorino, good jump. Ball just got out of his reach. Banya is doing a good job. Base hit all the way. That's what you like, though. If you're going to break it up, you like to see that clean base hit. Now he's got to go to work and make sure no further damage is done. Well, he misses on the inside, off the inside corner to Connor Jackson, who's 0 for 2. Now, no balls and two strikes. Could have thrown a ball out of the zone. Don't want to throw a ball really that close uh, for him to square it up like that. Liner to left. Ibanez coming in. He'll make the catch in the side. He's retired. So the game's first hit. A double by Hideki Matsui. He's left in scoring position. A nice round of applause for Vance Worley, who's through six here in Philadelphia. Low office product prices. Buy the Pennsylvania Lottery. Play Hot 100,000, the new instant game for the Pennsylvania Lottery. Must be 18 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. And buy Citizens Bank. We're for homes. Talk to us today about how we can help guide you to the loan that's right for you. Well, Vance Worley has allowed one hit tonight through six. It's a scoreless game. He just allowed the hit. In the top of the sixth inning, now he'll watch as his offense will try to get him a lead. He's probably done for the night. And Rollins will take a ball. The longest that both starters have gone, throwing no hitters, May 2nd, 1917. Hippo Vaughn of the Cubs and Fred Tony of the Reds. The Reds got a hit and a run in the 10th to win that ball game. Moscoso still has not allowed a hit. And it's one and two to Rollins. Outside two and two. Well, it has a little bit of a hesitation move. Don't think, however, that that is bothering the hitters. But maybe not having faced them, you know, before might have something to actually do with it. Well, he has one out here in the bottom of the sixth as he gets Rollins to ground out to second. I guess when you're struggling offensively, the Phillies are tonight, you try to look for a theory as to why, you know, a guy who had reasonable numbers in the minor leagues 36 wins a 3.50 ERA is holding the Phillies hitless into the six. Well I mean this is why you, you do have to play the game. Can't guide it just got to hit it. 
Polanco takes the knees. No balls and one strike. Uh, he's done a fairly good job in getting ahead of the hitters with he that has. first pitch strike, but it's been a quality strike down and away that pitch that he just threw to Polanco. Looper to center field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. The first hit of night for the Phillies. And it comes with one out here at the bottom of the sixth. Uh, it's got to make Polanco feel great. I mean, just haven't been able to get a base hit. Hitting in bad luck. Pitchers throwing really great pitches on him. Tough calls. That wasn't hit hard, but great placement as he doesn't overswing on a breaking ball. Slaps it right into center field. Well, here's Utley with the rudder at first and one away. Catcher looks like he's doing a little maintenance on his glove. Field line. Matsui on the run and he got to the spot. Makes the catch. Polanco goes back to first. Well, they're sending him every which way, but he's yeah. making all the plays. Yeah, ball's up high. The ball seems to be really kind of floating. Therefore, he's able to get up under it. More of a DH these days. Well, Bob Melvin says that in the games that he's played left, it's only been a few. He's looked pretty comfortable. Yeah, almost overran it though. He got there plenty of time. Josh Willingham is a guy that normally plays left field for the A's, and he's out with a sore Achilles. He's on the disabled list. Here's Ryan Howard with two outs and a runner at first. Has his power number 16 home runs, 62 RBIs. That's a bad call. Well, he's been making it all night, so. Yeah, he does that. You know, kind of reminds me when I was playing, calling those same balls that are off the plate. One ball, one strike to count to Howard with a runner at first. On the hands of one hopper. And Pennington throws out Howard. And the side is retired. That's again 6-3 in your scorebook. No runs. One hit. The first of the game for the Phillies. We go to the seventh.
Well, the sixth inning featured the end of a double no hitter as both teams got a base hit. That's who he got there's with two outs and Placido Polanco with one out and that's been it so far. Vance Worley went six. He'll leave the ball game now for David Herndon and Guillermo Moscoso. Well, he's been really good here tonight. Three walks and one strikeout and both teams pretty futile hitting so far, Tom. Absolutely. Uh, we go to the top of the seventh. David DeJesus will lead it off against David Herndon. Herndon, 21st ball game, no wins, a loss, a 4.18 earned run average with the injuries the Phillies have sustained to their bullpen. Jose Contreras is on the DL. We thought about Herndon and the fact that his role might be elevated a little bit, and that could be the case. It's amazing looking at the Phillies' bullpen. They've been really good this year. As DeJesus shows bunt, takes it high, it's 1 0. But think about the, the names that are in there now compared to what was expected at the start of the year. Stutes, Perez, Herndon, Matheson, Bastardo, Baez, and Matson, and then Kendrick is long man. Oh, that sounds like the group they're going to put together to go to the Lehigh Valley. <laughs> Supposed to be Brad Lidge, who's rehabbing right now. Obviously, Jose Contreras, Ryan Matson, sort of toward the back end. J.C. Romero as one of the lefties. De Jesus hits it in the air to right center field, playable for Victorino. The wind carries it a little ways. One out here in the seventh. Well, these lucky fans are tonight Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. Here's Kurt Suzuki. 0 for 2. And a strike to Suzuki. Phillies made two really good defensive plays on Worley. One was on this guy on a nice barehanded charge play by Polanco, and the other one was that 3 1 flip. Ryan Howard to Worley. Yeah, well, he helped that one himself. He did. That saved a run, though, the 3 1 flip. That was after Polanco made the play on Suzuki. And Worley helped himself because he kind of froze on the bag, even though the ball hadn't really arrived yet. On the inside corner with a slider, one ball and two strikes. Tomorrow for the Phillies, Cole Hamels. That one's hit back toward the middle, just past the diving Chase Utley. And it's a one out single for Suzuki. That ends a stretch of three for 32 for Suzuki. Tomorrow, Cole will be opposed by right hander Trevor Cahill. That guy's a sinker ball machine. Really good young pitcher. And, uh, Keeps the ball on the ground to say the least. So that's what you'll look for tomorrow. And everybody around here knows how good Cole Hamels has been. I wonder if they're going to get somebody up in the bullpen. Yeah, there's no stirring just yet. Moscoso is in the on deck circle. Bob Melvin juice of the DH. Now somebody is rubbing up a baseball out there at least. There is the pitcher on deck. One out right now. Sizemore's 0 for 1. He walked his last time up. In the air to center field. Victorino on the run and he gets there. Good play. Got that ball into the kitchen a little bit of Sizemore and it, hang, it hung up there for Victorino to run under it. Yeah, he did make a good play as you say. And the wind blew it back to him too which helped. Tonight's Phillies athletics game was the first game this season. With double five inning no hitters. There were two last year. They set it all up. I mean, this could be a low scoring series, right? <laughs> I mean, you figured there'd be some hits in. I mean, the Phillies had a few balls that were hit pretty mm -hmm. hard. You know, the one by Schneider, the one by Worley, a couple others. Well, Sweeney made a great play in right center field. Center fielder. Well, happy with Moscoso right here. He did get a sack down. 
He's a power hitting switch hitter. Why is he not batting left hand? Well, I think uh, it's probably a, maybe overstated it a or little bit. Or maybe went to the uh, Vicente Padilla school of switch hitting. Then it doesn't matter the pitcher. It just depends on how he wants to hit. Well, this is his 108th career game, minors and majors, and this is the first time he's getting a chance to hit. He's got a little stick going. Oh, he's enjoying himself up there. Got the, got a bunt down. I'm sure he he probably hit winter ball from time to time. Swing and a miss. He got him. Down on strikes. And a scoreless seventh for David Herndon. No runs a hit. One man left. It's time to stretch here at Citizens Bank Park. Question again, who is the A's all time career leader in saves? I give you the little mustache thing. Yeah. But he wasn't there long enough. What are you talking about? The, the guy that's the all time career leader in saves did have a mustache. Yeah, but it was Dennis Eckersley. Oh, no. you're right. <laughs> Just wanted to play along a little no, bit. No, you, you thought it was really fingers initially. At first, and I thought, yeah, I don't think he was there that long. All right, well, here's the thing Eckersley had 320. That's yeah. the answer. And Raleigh Fingers had 136. Yeah. He, could, he had a lot of saves with Milwaukee. He moved on to other teams and he may have even gone back to Oakland at one time. I'm not sure. Log back on the Phillies.com. Find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing Dodge Stump the fans. Well, we go to the bottom of the seventh and Shane Victorino will lead it off. It's a scoreless ball game. That whole hit thing. We got that out of the way. Yeah. Victorino takes a strike. It's 0 1. Big time, maybe drop a bunt right now. Try and get on base, make something happen. Yeah, Sarge was talking about that before. Maybe laying down a bunt just to kind of shake things up. Victorino's 0 for 2. Slices it foul. It's 0 and 2. This guy's been fastball, breaking ball, change up tonight. A lot of fastballs, and uh, you know they look like they're hittable, but hasn't been uh, haven't been that many balls hit hard. And I have to hear what they say afterwards. Maybe he had some late movement, some deception. Or maybe they're just not swinging real well at him. Charlie Manuel talked today. You know, somebody asked him about getting a right handed hitter because Charlie had talked in St. Louis that he'd like to get a right handed hitter, that he felt like the Phillies needed a right handed hitter. Well, he said today, and this was a great quote. Somebody asked him, Do you, you still think you need a right handed hitter? He said, I need a hitter that's going to square up a baseball. <laughs> And he was talking about the guys on his current yeah. team. Yeah, tonight's a perfect example. That wind has really started to blow out to right and right center. You, you get a thing, ball up in that tonight, you get a home run now. That cold front has come in. It's really pleasant. 
There you go. What a pretty night. One and two the count to Victorino. In the dirt, two balls and two strikes. The Fanatic has made oh, his boy. triumphant return to the first base dugout. Got to get back up on the horse, Wills. Yeah, and he certainly has. That's it. And, and when he got hit uh, the other night, he wasn't even on the dugout. He was in the stand. That's true. Just to a 2 2 change up there, you know, which we talk about all the time. That's such a trap pitch. Because now you almost have to throw a fastball, you would think, in the middle of the order. Or I mean, uh, with a six hole hitter like a is coming up, left hand hitter. Doesn't mean he will, but if you're Victorino, you think you're going to get one. There comes the 3 2 pitch. He got oh, his got fastball, and he was late. Fastball. And he was late on it. There's a Banez taking a few practice swings. That big old foot in the background. <laughs> Ground ball to first. Big hop for Connor Jackson. Yeah, there's one away here in the seventh. So one out. Ibanez is due up. You know, one guy that knew how to take care of a 3 2 pitch was. The great Pete Rose wheels who's in yeah. the ballpark tonight. Yeah, there he is. Had a chance to go down with Sarge and hang out a little bit with him before the game. And it was it was really fun to see Pete again and just laugh. He can make it laugh. Larry Christensen there with him in the Citizens Bank box or suite. Hit King. <laughs> there he is. He always knows where the cameras are too. There's LC. LC's waving. You you mean Pete knows where the camera is, or LC knows where the camera is. Uh, <laughs> either or. There's Ibanez who takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. That's some kind of prime time player right there. It's Petey. There he got his Phillies hat. Yeah. <laughs> I asked Sargent since how did the conversation go? And Sargent's face just lit up. Oh, it was fun, Tom. We just laughed. He can make you laugh now. Sarge can too, but I mean Pete Rose, he's entertaining. The man who gave Gary his yep. name. The Sarge. Lucky enough, I was lucky enough to have five years with him and, and just learned so much baseball from the guy. He would talk it to you anytime he had questions about strategy or why this or why that. And boy, it was like a PhD in baseball to be around Pete Rose. And that kid right there is wearing the Pete Rose Phillies jersey. Number 14. Sarge always talks about the intensity. Oh. On a daily basis, that Pete Rose brought to a game, to an at bat, to didn't every get, at bat, didn't give up an at bat either. He had one hit, he wanted two. He had two, he wanted three, three, he wanted four. That's just the way he was. The all-time hit leader in Major League Baseball history. Back toward the middle, glove goes flying. Pennington picks it up behind the bag and just throws out Ibanez. Now, technically. You're not allowed to throw your glove at the ball, but Moscoso wasn't throwing the glove at the ball. He just lost his glove. right. That would be an umpire's judgment call if, in fact, he did just what you said. And you know whether it would have been Joe's or one of the infield umpires, I don't know. But right here, he just yeah, he just throws the his hand back there, trying to knock the ball down. The glove flew off. Doesn't matter because he didn't hit the ball. And a bang bang play at first. He's out. There's Joe West, the crew chief, home plate umpire. Be one of the guys that was around when Pete played. There is no penalty if the ball is not touched yeah. by the thrown glove. Right. It's two bases if a fair ball bounces or is deflected into the stands. Kind of interesting. And they have to rule intentional too. Oh, and two the count to Dominic Brown. Two bases of a fielder deliberately throws his glove at and touches a thrown ball, mm -hmm. and the ball is in play. And deliberately. Three bases if a fielder deliberately throws his glove at and touches a fair ball. The ball is in play, and the batter may advance at home at his peril.
On the Toyota Major League scoreboard. Other interleague games tonight. Texas is shutting out the Mets. 3 0. Top of the fourth. Adrian Beltre. Did you see some of the plays that Beltre made earlier this week at third? I mean, unbelievable. He's a good player. In that series against the Astros. Two balls and two strikes the count to Dominic Brown. Still nobody up in their bullpen. They, you know, they're really happy with what this kid's done for him tonight. He's coming up on 100 pitches. Ball strike ratio is okay, but he is, they have not hit many balls hard off him. Dominic Brown, one guy, has gotten on twice and out of walks. Just wandering around. Another deep count for him tonight. So he's going to get their bullpen up now because Schneider next and then David Herndon coming up. Pitcher spot. Three balls and two strikes the count to Dominic Brown. And he got a fastball and he fouls it away. There's Michael Stutz. Doesn't even look like there's any chance that David Herndon's going to hit. No, he's not going to hit. Line drive, base hit into center field. Brown did a nice job waiting on that breaking pitch, that slider. So a two out single. Hey, the Phillies and Waste Management are teaming up for a Red Goes Green e cycle event Saturday, June 25th. From 8 until 11 a.m. So tomorrow from 8 until 11 in Lot S off Patterson Avenue at Citizens Bank Park. Fans may bring up to two items per person for recycling. And the first 200 people to donate items will receive an autographed photo card from Phillies pitcher Ryan Matson. Go to phillies.com slash red goes green for more information. Joey Devine was up and throwing in the pen. For the Phillies, Ross Glow or for the uh, A's, Stutes up for the Phillies, and Ross Glow is in the on deck circle to pinch hit for David Herndon. We the, get there. The Vines, a guy we saw with the Braves a few years ago. Then he had some, uh, he had Tommy John surgery. Ooh, great time if he could steal a bag here. Huh? Like we said we don't know whether he's on his own or not. Doesn't appear that way because uh, he hasn't. He hasn't looked like he's going to run, and he, this is the third time he's been on tonight. Oh, he was in between steps and just got the body back to the bag. That's a good move that time. Real quick there, real quick feed, and as Tom said he just kind of stepping out into his lead and almost got him. Almost as if he could have decided if he should go back feet first or hand first. Well, he was startled. His only mindset there was get back. A little one way lead that time. That's what that move will do to you. And Sam Perlazzo over there working with him a little bit on his lead, trying to help him out. Not a bad time to run. You know, you might get a breaking ball here, you know, something in the dirt where they're trying to strike Schneider out, make him chase. Brown doesn't go, and Schneider fouls it back. Well, as it turned out, it was a fastball. One 
way out in front of a changeup, and Schneider's down on strikes, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, one man left at first. We have played seven still. Nothing solved here in Philly. We don't just make SUVs, we make history. And by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines new rapid rewards. Unlimited reward seats and no blackout dates. Oh, we go to the eighth inning. Still a scoreless game. Hayes and the Phillies. And David Herndon is about ready to begin his second inning of relief work. In place of Vance Worley, who went the first six, allowed uh, one hit, four walks, four strikeouts. Not a whole lot of offense today for either team. Some pretty good pitching. You know, not overpowering pitching. You know, guys just keeping hitters off balance. Seen a lot of that lately. Well, top of the order is due up for the A's. Here's a guy you think could try to bunt. Good speed. Nothing, nothing game late, eighth inning. And he takes low and away. Boy, Weeks is so much different in size and stature than his brother. His brother's thick. Yeah. Both very good athletes. Bullpen activity for both teams. There's a strike and it's two and one. Joey Devine continues to throw for the A's. Foul ball and it's two and two. Weeks had a good start to the season down at AAA. That's why he earned the promotion. At 321 with three homers and 22 RBIs. He's taken over second base for Mark Ellis for Oakland. Hit hard on one hop. Ryan Howard is over. And yeah, they say he's given them some energy at the top of their order since he's been playing regularly. Mark Ellis has been an everyday player for a long time, but uh, not right now. Oh, speaking of energy. Good defense gives you good energy. It's our course light freeze cam. Yeah, here's this play where Ryan Howard smothers the ball. He's hit it right off the heel of the glove. And then he keeps it in front of him, and then they tossed him out at first. And then Sweeney, we, that was a play in right center field. Tremendous backhand catch. And that's why there's no runs in this game and very few hits. Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Yeah, that play by Howard, if he didn't make it and it got into right field, well, the A's would have taken the lead. There's an old Philadelphia Athletics hat. Yeah. That lady's trying to get the best possible view she can. That ball is scorched right at Ryan Howard. 
And there are two outs. So two away, and Ryan Sweeney's up. That ball had some sink, hook, everything on it. Right at him. Sweeney's 0 for 2. He walked his second time up. That was in the fourth. Wheels, our center field shot tonight is without a Bernie Lehman. Yeah. Who is uh, out enjoying the, the nuptials of his daughter, Patricia. That means she's getting married? Yep. And her husband, I guess husband by now, right? Patrick Schistler. Congratulations. Sean is out in their center field camera. He's done a great job tonight. Done a great job showing us all these pitches that are getting the hitters That's out. Right. <laughs> Good job, Sean. <laughs> well, best to Bernie and his family. Hope they're enjoying their night. There's a strike to. Oh, no. That's a ball. That looked like a strike. Yeah, it must have been high. Sweeney thought it was a strike. Herndon thought it was a strike. The guy that matters didn't. No, he really didn't. Here comes Charlie Manuel. Phillies did have bullpen action with the Deki Matsui scheduled to hit. So they had a left hander loosening up in the pen. I'll take a look one more time. It's a ball, according to Joe West. It was it's a little high. high, yeah. So ball four. And now a pitching change. David Herndon's night is done. The Phillies will go to a left-hander here in the top of the eighth. Two outs, a runner at first. Juan Perez will make his Citizens Bank Park debut at a Phillies uniform. It's an 18-T call to the bullpen. Back in stock, the Philly Fanatic Pillow Pet. This high quality, super soft plush collectible is now available by calling 877 Go Phils or visit it by visiting the Majestic Clubhouse Store. And the Fanatic Attic and the Majestic Clubhouse Stores, great items, including the, the pillow. Juan Perez in his second ball game in a Phillies uniform, lefty against lefty. Yeah, he's in here for one hitter and hopefully an end the inning. Throws a slider to Matsui for a strike. It's 0 and 1. We talked about him last night in that game in St. Louis. He can throw some knee buckling breaking balls and then he can be all over the place. You don't know what you're going to get from him. That pitch right there is as good a pitch you can throw to a left handed hitter. You're not going to hit it. Throws it again and Matsui lays off. This time it was outside. 1 and 1. He has Stutes up again and he would be up. He is up for Connor Jackson on deck, a right handed hitter. Matsui's numbers against lefties this year. Five of his six home runs have come against the left hander. There he goes. Now the first one was really nasty, and then a slider miss, and that looked like that may have been a fastball. There's Michael Stutes.
And mm. a slider for strike two. That's a really good pitch. They probably caught too much of the plate on that one. But you saw Matsui, who, as you said, Tom can hit left hander. He froze on that. They can get him to chase. Two and two to count with a runner at first. Line drive toward right field. Here comes Dominic Brown. Makes the running grab, and the side is retired. He threw another slider. He gets Matsui. The inning is finished. So one batter up, one batter down for Perez. We go to the bottom of the eighth here in Philly. Plus, meet Nikola Vucevic, the Sixers' first round draft pick. Get all the news Philly fans need to know on Sports Night, presented by Toyota tonight at 10, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Now, Vucevic was here at the ballpark before the ball game, and he was here with Lavoy Allen, who was also selected by the Sixers. Lavoy, of course, out of Temple University. He had a tremendous career for uh, Fran Dunphy. Michael Eric was here, too. He's part of that. Temple basketball squad, both really tall dudes. I think John Vukovic would have liked that. Vucevic, Vucevic, yeah. Vucevic. He'd have been a big follower of his. Well, he would have had to look up because he was really tall. <laughs> Joey Devine is the new pitcher for the A's. 17th ball game for Devine. He's been good out of the pen. Missed 2009, 2000, and 2010. Tommy John surgery. He has not thrown a home run ball. Since 2006, to give you an idea how long ago that was, the guy who hit it, Moises Alou. Wow. Of course, he missed a couple of seasons, but he does keep the ball in the yard if you're thinking about a homer right now. Fly ball down the left field line. And Sizemore can't get it. It's 0 and 2. Well, Divine at one time was a bright prospect in the A's organization. In fact, they had a couple guys that were coming up at the same time. Kyle Davies, Joey Devine, they just never panned out the way the Braves anticipated. A's bullpen, ninth best earned run average in the in Major League Baseball. The Phillies have the eighth best ERA. 77 games, 75 and two third innings, 370, 307 batters without a homer. And a breaking ball outside, two balls, two strikes. Well, he has not had a good month of June. He's allowed five earned runs in nine and two thirds here in June. Let's see if that continues. Load fouls it away.
Two and two the count. Line drive. Diving play by Pennington. He made the catch out of the air. What a way. Well, for a team that's not considered that great defensively, they've made some pretty good plays tonight. They sure have. This boy, this ball looks like a base hit off the bat, too. And full extension, tremendous play by Pennington, the shortstop. That Here is past another, him. Yeah. Another look at it. You know, they playing real deep. Nobody on base. So that's why he's able to have an angle like that and cut it off. So what out? Here's Rollins. Rollins is 0 for 3. He was robbed by Ryan Sweeney. That was back in the third. Here's the way this game is laid out. The Phillies have had some base runners tonight. They haven't had one in scoring position. On the other side, for the A's, they've had a couple in scoring position. In fact, overall, they've had three. Been a lonely night for the third base coaches. Hits one in the air to center. And it's Sweeney's there. And there are two outs. So two away. Here's Placido Polanco. Sellout number 164 in a row here at the park. That doesn't include the postseason. Pretty impressive stuff. Polanco is one for two. He has one of the two hits for the Phils. And he takes low. Yeah, he got their first hit, the one that broke up the no hitter that Moscoso had going. In the sixth inning with one out. And Sizemore, the third baseman, guarding the line. Big hole on the left side for Polanco. They don't want to give up that extra base hit down the line. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two. He basically throwing sinker, hard fastball, and then uh, that's his curveball, more of a curveball type slurve. Sinker though is at 94 95 miles per hour. Sutley's on deck. Joey Devine back in 2005 was a, a first round pick for the Braves. Came to the A's in 2008. The 3 2 pitch to Polanco. Down low, ball four. So he's on base for the third time. Second time he's walked. And that keeps the inning alive for Chase Sutley. So with two outs and a runner at first. That leaves 0 for 3. Hit a ball down the left field line toward the corner his last time up at Matsui track down. Ball one. I think Suzuki may have been crossed up on that pitch. Goes out to the mound very quickly. Other than that, he was just reminding Divine of something. He just kind of caught that ball awkwardly. Yeah. 
on the Toyota Major League scoreboard. And later on tonight, Florida will be the home team in Seattle. Things aren't going bad enough for them, huh? Yeah, they, what a concert there today. A U2 concert this right. weekend. So they got kicked out of the ballpark. Have to go 3,000 miles, or however many miles it is from Florida, for a home game. Of course, they didn't expect to be in the funk they're in right now when they had to go out and do it. Outside, two balls and one strike. And how about Seattle? They left after playing the Phillies, right. flew to New York, and then went home. Got swept in New York and flew back home. A Washington, I mean. Ryan Howard talking to Charlie Emanuel. Two and one, the count up. Lead. Outside, three and one. He said this guy does not throw home run balls, but here's a great spot for Chase Utley to look for something in the zone and hit it hard. That's a good take pitch. You know, if you're going to separate home plate, like maybe he was trying to do there, that's the part you don't swing at. You still have another pitch. Because yeah, he couldn't pull that pitch the no. way it was. At least it would have been difficult to do it. Right, and, and Polanco is not necessarily the guy you're going to score with a double, even with two outs. So it's three and two. Polanco will be off and running on this pitch. Jackson holds him on. There he goes. And a check swing by Utley. They appeal. No swings as the third base umpire, Chad Fairchild. Back to back walks now by Devon. Phillies have first and second with two outs. They went back to back. I mean, they went up with a breaking ball there. 3 2 with Ryan Howard on deck in a scoreless game. Well, Ron Romanick, the pitching coach for the A's, out to the mound to talk to Joey Devine. Kurt Young was the longtime pitching coach for the A's. Now he left before this year started, and he's over in Boston, so we'll see him this week. He's part of Terry Francona's staff. Young was brought in when Ken Maka was the manager of the A's. Yeah, and they need a new pitching coach this year when John Farrell took the job as manager of the Toronto Blue Jays a long time. Pitching coach for Terry Francona. So here's Howard, 0 for 3. He's grounded out twice. He struck out. Well, he did, if he hurts them here, you go back to the 3-2 two, two breaking ball that they just threw to Utley. Did not want to challenge him in that spot, and now they're going to go after Ryan Howard with the base runner closer to score, and now it's second. And now there's a lefty that gets up and starts to toss. A breaking ball in the outside corner. They have Breslow and Fuentes. They're two lefties out of the pen. So they've never done much with Brian Fuentes. There's your go ahead RBIs and Ryan Howard, number one with 20. Like to make it 21. The 0 1 pitch from Devine. Hit on the ground, softly to first. Connor Jackson gobbles it up, and the Phillies lead two here in the eighth. No runs, no hits. Two men left. We go to the ninth. It's still. A scoreless game.
his team struggle somewhat offensively, particularly with runners at scoring position, and that's been the case tonight. Some, some pretty good pitching as this game is scoreless as we head to the ninth. Michael Stutes will come out of the pen for the Phillies. The right hander in his 25th ball game, a 2.38 earned run average. This will be his 25th game. And he's on to face Connor Jackson, David DeJesus, and Kurt Suzuki. And the first pitch over for a strike, it's 0 1. Vance Worley started, he won six innings. He allowed just a hit, he walked four, struck out four. Then David Herndon, an inning and two thirds scoreless. Juan Perez, a third of an inning scoreless. And now it's Stutes, and it's 0 2. Jackson tried to check or tried to hold and he went around according to Joe West one away here in the ninth. He can't believe it. No he was thinking well, I didn't swing at that how about appealing it? and Joe says no I got it all the way as he chased the breaking ball there. According to the veteran home plate umpire. Did he go or not. You wouldn't want that to be called on your guy. No. It looked like he may have held. It looked like the body took him forward and mm -hmm. you know, toward the plate a little, toward the mound a little bit. There's a strike to David DeJesus. It's 0 and 1. Yeah, it looked like one you might think about appealing. DeJesus is 0 for 3. He's flied out twice. All that said and done, Joe's a really good ball and strike umpire, and he's been very consistent here tonight. He, he doesn't have a whole lot of problems with with players on balls and strike. He gets in more trouble on the bases, I think, than he does behind the plate. There's some strange stuff tends to happen. Yeah, he's given the outside part of the play tonight, but he's done it from the start of this game. Slider and a call. Strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, and so on. Yeah, he's got a good breaking ball tonight. He's got both his outs on sliders. Crowd getting into the uh, stew yeah. thing here now. Here's another breaking ball. That's a good pitch to a left handed hitter. He just froze him. That was a strike. And Joe rung him up. So two strikeouts for Michael Stutes. Here's Suzuki, who has a hit tonight. Only his second hit on the road trip. He's two for 12 now for the A's. Takes a slider outside. It's 1 0. Oh. In the Phillies' half of the ninth, it's Victorino, Ibanez, and Brown. And it looks like it's going to be against Brian Fuentes. At least he's warming up. Popped up. Right side of the infield. It's Chase Utley's call, and he puts it away. And Michael Stutes pitches a 1 2 3 ninth inning. It's a pretty good pitch tonight by the Phils and the A's. We go to the bottom of the ninth in a scoreless game.
of the ninth. Coco Crisp comes into the ball game to play center field. The center fielder Ryan Sweeney shifts over to right. And the new pitcher for the A's is Brian Fuentes. It is 36th ball game. It hasn't gone all that well for Fuentes this year. One in seven with a 4.59 earned run average. Now he has never given up a run to the Phillies in 13 career appearances. That's nine and two thirds, three hits, six walks though, and he has struck out 13 during that time. Yeah, yeah he's he has coming a blown in. save. Excuse me, Wills, but that's because he, he allowed an inherited runner to score. Right. He he's going to turn Victorino around, then they go left left with Ibanez and Brown, and against left-handed hitters, they're hitting 293 off him this year. Surprising. He hasn't had a good season. So Victorino. 292 average takes on the inside corner. It's 0 and 1. Fuentes and Bob Garen, the previous manager for the A's, they didn't really see eye to eye. Oh, it won the count to Victorino. Guy had some good years with Colorado, and then one year he just blew sky high. Like three straight games he pitched where there were walk off hits against him, and he lost his closers role. Went to the Angels, struggled at times there, too. Pitched well from time to time. Victorino out in front, and it's one ball and two strikes. Well, he is the all time saves leader in Colorado history. Jose Jimenez with 102 is second. Then Houston Street, the current closer for Colorado. Yeah, he used to be a closer for the Athletics. 1 and 2, the count to Victorino. And he fouls it back just to our right. Nice catch by a fan. And it remains 1 and 2. Banez on deck. It's funny with all the success Fuentes has had against the Phillies, there aren't too many guys who have a lot of at bats against him. Victorino's 0 for 1. It's hard not to jump at what he throws to the plate. Yeah, it looks like he lands before he throws. He takes a ball out of the glove kind of funny. Two two off speed pitch there to him, breaking ball maybe, and now he's at a full count with another fastball count. One of these hitters you hope to make them pay for this. Ball four, Victorino's aboard. Boy, Joe West didn't like Fuentes' reaction then, and see Melvin right there. He's yelling at him too. Hey, Joe, and the head went around. He says, "Low." <laughs> it, it's really close. I mean, it, really close. Uh, it looked like it, it could have been a strike, but it wasn't. No, from their from their perspective over there, they didn't think it was low. Now there have been five stolen bases in six attempts against Fuentes as he delivers a strike to Ibanez. He has a slide step which makes it a little more difficult to steal against him. Last time the Phillies were involved in a scoreless game through nine. They won 2 nothing in 2010 against the Cardinals in 11. Well, we've talked about that game a lot lately. I mean that game. You know, it was the one last year that they won it, and then that catapulted them to a heck of a year yeah. after that. That's the game that Cole Hamill started mm -hmm. out in St. Louis. Sure, it was the final game of that four game series. They'd, been, they'd lost the first three. No bun here for me, Banyas. 
Oh and to the count just trying to hope that they can get him going here and he can pull a ball in the hole maybe get a first and third. You know he's not a guy who bunts anyway can even bunt who knows. And you have another left handed hitter on deck now you do have. You know some right handed. You have right handed hitters on the bench. Oh we had the pitch to pull. Oh did Fuentes make a mistake. And he slapped at the ball that. They just threw back to him like oh I got away with that. Look at this spinner coming middle in. Oh pull me it says. And he did but couldn't keep it fair. That is not where he wanted it. Well, let's hope he throws it there again. Yeah he wants it away from him. Victorino a very short lead off first. And it's one ball and two strikes to Ibanez. Board says he just threw a change up and that's another foolish and not I want to use the word foolish but strange pitch because that's a pitch you can pull because it's coming down and in. I wonder he had trouble with Gary. Who's a catcher. Bob's a nice guy Bob Garen but he is opinionated too. <laughs> Wanted to the count to Ibanez. Fly ball to left easy play for Matsui. See, that's the point I was trying to make. He wanted to stay away from him so that he cannot pull the ball and get you a first and third and that pitch is away and he hit the fly ball to left. So Ibanez is retired. And Dominic Brown. Will bat. Two strike you're really defensive and that wasn't really a good pitch either. But you know he's just not swinging the bat at all. He could have pulled that pitch. Or done some damage with it, but not right now for Ibanez. Dominic Brown, one for one. He's walked twice. And he takes a strike. It's 0 1. Serena showing no signs of running, and the only reason you can figure is, is there's a, another left handed hitter up there with a the hole open. And Fuentes has made mistakes where, you know, Ibanez could have pulled the ball. Look at all the room you have when you're a left handed hitter right now to pull the ball. You don't have to hit it hard. And a throw over. I was just wondering, you know, Shane has a very small lead over at first, and Fuentes just threw over there. I wonder if he just takes a normal lead if he can get into the head of Fuentes that there's a chance he could run. You know maybe that splits his concentration a little bit. Does that make sense. Yes. It does. Base hit it to right field Victorino to second he'll stop there. And the Phillies have first and second with one out. That's a nice job by Dominic Brown to pull the ball that ball was in the air for a while. And I don't know whether that. Pulled him or not, so he couldn't get a, a better jump to get the third base. Well, now Bob Melvin's going out with Brian Schneider due up. Hits it off the end of the bat a little bit. As I said, it's got some hang time going out there, but it's hit to the left of the outfielder. Now he comes on and gets it in front of him, does Sweeney, and that stops Shane Victorino at second. Ben Francisco, he'll pinch hit for Stutes if it gets that far. Ryan Schneider is the batter. Victorino's at second. Boy, it would be nice to get him over to third with one out. Now they're not holding Dominic Brown on at first. They'll keep an eye on Victorino at second. Yeah, they don't care about Brown. Right. They want to make sure they cut the hole off. Right. I mean, he's ground ball toward first. Backing up on it is Jackson. He slips. It'll take it to the first base back. So second and third, two outs, and Ben Francisco will be introduced as a pinch hitter for the Phillies. 
And they have no right hander up in the bullpen. Nothing, Phillies nothing. Bottom of the ninth, two outs. The winning run is over at third. Francisco takes off the outside corner. And it's one ball and no strikes. Off to it oh. The two oh pitch. Ground ball over the head of the third baseman, size more, and the Phillies are going to win the ball game. A pinch hit single for Ben Francisco. Home Shane Victorino and the Phillies win it one to nothing. How about that? The third baseman Sizemore was playing in just a little bit, and that ball chopped at the right spot for Francisco. To bring home Shane Victorino. Yeah, he was up. He was up at third base. And, you know, if he's all the way back, it's a big old high one hopper right at him. As you said, he was up. And the ball bounces over his head. And a big win for the Phillies there as they're able to bleed this game out. That looked like a big old AstroTurf hop. And you see he's playing on the grass. I don't know. That's, a, you know, that's just a decision on on where you're going to play your infield or why they would do that with two outs. In this case, it backfired. He almost falls down, but it wasn't going to matter because he could have crawled to first base. An RBI signal for Ben Francisco breaks home Victorino. The Phillies win the opener of this series, and Sarge is down on the field with Ben. Take it away, Sarge. Hey, guys, thanks a lot. Well, wasn't a lot of hits, game-winning hit. Got to make you feel good here for the team. Yeah, um, it was a good pitching game. Uh, you know, our bullpen stepped up a lot of innings and kept the zero up there, and uh, we squeaked one across. Now, what was the pitch you hit for the base hit? Uh, just a fastball. You know, I was looking for heater 2-0, and I uh, threw it. Uh, luckily, got over his head. Now, when the team's not hitting like this, Ben, and you're on the bench, I know that you're looking. Any advice at all that you give to the guys that you see that's going up to the plate if they're pulling off of the ball a little bit? Yeah, we're always talking to each other. Um, you know, we try and help each other out if we see something. Um, you know, guys do it for me, and I like to do the same for them. Well, continued success. Great game winning did. Hope to have you on more. Tom, Wills? All right, Sarge, thank you very much. That's a clutch pinch hit for Ben Francisco. He spun his wheels as he left the box. He doesn't always show a lot of emotion, but he was pretty excited about this victory for the Phillies.